There are many times in our life when we find that loving is a very difficult challenge in life. Even loving our loved ones, our children, our elderly parents, or even our spouse and our friends. Because we exhaust so much time, resources, energy in loving them, taking care of them, attending to their needs, sacrificing our sleep, our leisure. And yet, very often, we feel that we have been taken for granted. Quite often, our loved ones, they don't appreciate what we do. They tend to take us for granted. And not only for granted, they become hostile. They are resentful. They treat us worse than they treat strangers. And some of them, unfortunately, we have to see them going down the slippery road to perdition. They get involved in all kinds of crimes, immoral activities, cheating, gambling, slandering, sex abused. My dear brothers and sisters, when such things happen, we feel that we have given our love in vain. Like the prophet Isaiah in today's first reading, he said, I have toiled in vain. I have exhausted myself for nothing. And we feel like giving up. Giving up in continuing to love them because we feel that no matter what we do, they don't seem to change. And for ourselves, sometimes we think we are failures. We think that we have not done well, especially parents. Sometimes parents blame themselves because their children did not turn out the way they thought they should with all the love and care and even bringing them up in the faith. And we ourselves can fall into depression. My dear brothers and sisters, we can be very sure that Jesus, not just Isaiah, the suffering servant, feel that way. Because we are told that on the farewell meal, Jesus was in distress. Jesus was about to enter into his passion. And he knew his disciples would betray him. He knew Peter and the apostles would abandon him. And yet he continued to love them to the end. He was still with them at supper, the last supper. He continued to have hope in them, even though he knew that they would betray him. And this was because Jesus, he loves us all in such a way that his love is always free. He is not only free in love, but he is free to allow us to love him or to reject him. He does not enforce his love on us. Love is always an invitation. And that is why he continued to extend the invitation to Peter and the apostles. He did not give up on them. Of course, we can be very certain 
it was very painful for Jesus. Jesus, being a man, surely would have his feelings of betrayal, abandonment. And we all know how many times in our own lives, the friends we love most abandoned us and have betrayed us. And yet Jesus could forgive Peter and the apostles, and even Judas. And why is that so? Because Jesus knows that we are weak. We are human beings. Our love is always finite, limited. Even with our loved ones, we don't love them as much as they loved us. How much more when we talk about the love of God? So Jesus knows our heart. He knows that Peter and the apostles truly loved him. But they were cowards. In the face of death, they ran away. Although in today's gospel, they say, we will die for you. And St. Peter said, I will lay down my life for you. Peter meant well. And Jesus said, Lay down your life for me. You will disown me three times. That is why Jesus said to Peter, I'm going. Where I'm going, we cannot follow me now. You will follow me later. Peter was not yet ready to follow Jesus. Because his love was still inadequate. But then even in the case of Judas, we see how the Lord loved Judas. You would think that Jesus gave up on Judas. This is not true. He knew that Judas would commit cold murder. Unlike Peter and the apostles, they abandoned Jesus out of weakness. That is why it's not so difficult to forgive those of, of our loved ones who have betrayed us out of weakness. Sometimes even our spouse, because they are lustful, and we know they are lustful, we can even forgive them. Or our loved ones who are always hot-tempered, we can even forgive them because we know deep in their hearts they really loved us, but they are weak. But what about those people who deliberately betray us, like Judas? It was a premeditated murder. He planned to kill Jesus. He planned to sell him for 30 silver pieces. Even for Judas, the Lord loves him. That is why during the farewell meal, Jesus extended the bread to Judas, hoping that he would respond to his love. Jesus was still trying to reach out to him, but he refused. His mind was made up. Indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord never gives up on us, even until the last moment. It is we who give up on ourselves. That is why the greatest tragedy of Judas was not because he betrayed the Lord. That was not the greatest tragedy. The greatest tragedy was he could not forgive himself for betraying the Lord. And that's why he took his own life. He committed suicide. Because when he saw the gravity of his sin, when he saw Jesus suffering, being scourged and put to death, he could never forget and forgive his mistakes. It was sin, yes, but it was also pride. 
the pride that refused to say sorry. Unlike Peter who betrayed the Lord, Peter was humble enough to look at the eyes of Jesus and wept. His tears were tears of sorrow and he was forgiven. So my dear brothers and sisters, why did Jesus go through all these things? Why did Jesus continue to love us unconditionally? The reason is very simple. Because throughout his whole life, Jesus has always preached, love your enemies, forgive them. The only way to win our enemies over is to win them by love. Not violence, not retaliation, like what the world is doing. This is what the world does, retaliate, attack back, humiliate the person, destroy the person's integrity, dignity, shame him in front of everybody. Take revenge, sue him in court. That is not the way of Jesus. He wins us over by his love, by his forgiveness. And that was what happened to Peter. That's why when he was converted, when he was moved by him, then you notice at the end of the gospel, when Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Three times he said yes. That was the time when Jesus said to Peter, now follow me. If we have not received the love of God, we cannot love. This is a very important principle. If you cannot forgive your brothers and sisters, it is because you have not yet received the love of God. You have not understood Christ's love for you. If you have understood His love for you, then you will repent. You will be moved. And once you are touched and moved, you will be able to love. Even those who have betrayed us, who have hurt us deeply. Because why? We ourselves, my dear brothers and sisters, we are sinners. And Jesus has forgiven us. Now we must do the same.